Okay, today we're going to take a look at how to uh, simplify a complex fraction. Um, and we're going to do a method that's going to be relatively quick and easy and um, we'll, you'll find very, very helpful if you're um, using and dealing with complex fractions in calculus. You want a short, quick, easy way to be able to simplify these. Alright, so for my first example here I've got um, the complex fraction 2 over 3x in my numerator and then in the denominator I've got 1 over x. Okay, so I've got a fraction in the numerator, fraction in the denominator, that's what makes it a complex fraction. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to look at all of my denominators and find the least common denominator. So in this numerator, this fraction right here, the denominator is a 3x. Alright, down here in this denominator, but in this fraction, this denominator is an x. So I've got to come up with the least common denominator between 3x and x. Alright, smallest thing that both of those go into is going to be a 3x. Alright, so your number one first goal is to find your least common denominator. So the least common denominator in this case is going to be a 3x. Alright, now what I want to do then is I'm going to multiply through by 3x. I'm going to multiply this numerator by 3x and I'm going to multiply the denominator by 3x. All right, makes it a very quick process. All right, now I usually just write 3x down on both of those. All right, it is 3x over 1. If you need to visualize that, you can put it over 1, but to me that just makes it cluttered a little bit. This 3x is in the numerator. This 3x is in the denominator. All right, so what that's going to do then is that's going to make them cross out. So real easily those cross out, and I'm left with a 2, and that numerator is simplified really, really easy. All right, now when I multiply through down here, I've got that 3x again. It is in the top. All right, and if you've got to put it over one to visualize it in the top, that's fine, but it'll clutter it up. All right, this being in the top, I've got an x there and I've got an x there, so I can cross out the two little x's right there. What's left is 1 times 3, and that gives me just a 3 then. So real quickly, I have simplified that complex fraction down to 2 thirds. Okay? All right, now let's look at our second example here. All right, sometimes... Um, especially the farther along you go, then you get more than just a fraction in the top and a fraction in the bottom. I've got a little binomial thing going on here up here at the top. All right, but because this portion of it is a fraction, that's what makes this entire thing a complex fraction. All right, so I'm going to look at all my denominators. Okay, now you do want to be a little bit careful here. I have a denominator of x right there. This is over 1, so I do not have a denominator there. Now this, if I think of it as a fraction, over 1, I could you know, maybe put that in there like that, over 1, I do not have a denominator down there either. So my least common denominator really is just that x right there. Okay, so least common denominator in this one is going to be x. Okay, so I'm going to multiply through by x. Now when I do that, I have to, since that numerator there is a binomial, I have to put a set of parentheses around it to multiply through by x. And here in the bottom, I usually put a set of parentheses around that as well. Now, this one, I definitely need to think about distributing that x to both of those spots to simplify this. Okay. Now, this x and this x is in the exact same location, so x times x is going to be x squared. I think I'm going to come down here for this one, x squared. All right, now this time when I do x times 1 over x, this is x is in the numerator, this one's in the denominator. They're going to cancel out, so that's going to leave me with a minus 1. Okay, now on this denominator, on the denominator I usually do not get in a big hurry to distribute. I usually just squish them together. So, um, and let's go ahead and put the x in front just to clean it up to make it look a little nicer there. So x times x plus 1. The reason I don't get in a big hurry to multiply those denominators out is because in this case, if you remember your factoring, that x squared minus 1 is the difference of 2 squares. So I can factor it and it's going to cross out. If I would have multiplied and distributed there on the bottom, I just would have had to factor the x back out. So it's just going to save a little bit of step here. I am going to go ahead and factor that numerator into an x plus 1 and an x minus 1, that being the difference of 2 squares. This denominator, if I just leave it alone, oops, put in that one right there, then I can see that my x plus 1 and x plus 1s are going to cross out. All right, leaving me then with a final answer of x minus 1 over x. All right, so a little bit more effort than this first one here. All right, but that's stepping it up. This would be like a really easy one. This would be about a medium one, okay? All right, find your least common denominator, multiply through by it, and then, if necessary, factor, simplify a little bit farther. 
All right, let's do one more um, example here. All right, and this one we're going to have um, in our numerator two fractions up there and then just plain x in the bottom. All right, your first goal would be to go through and to try to find the least common denominator. Okay, so here I have a fraction and the denominator is 2 plus x. Here I've got a fraction, my denominator is 2. All right, and then the number one mistake is some people want to throw an x in there, but you've got to think of this as x over 1, that denominator is 1, so I don't have to deal with this at all. All right, so on this one, least common denominator turns out to be 2, 2 plus x. All right, just those two things multiplied together. Okay, so again, I'm going to multiply through the top and the bottom by my least common denominator. I will put parentheses around the top and multiply it by 2 times 2 plus x. And on the bottom, I'm going to multiply it 2 times 2 plus x. Okay, on the top, I do want to distribute. This is a binomial in there, so I'm going to want to distribute to both of those locations. All right, now I'm not really going to want to cross things out on this one because it's going to clutter it up, but when I take this 2 times 2 plus x times this first fraction, all right, hopefully you're going to be able to see that the 2 plus x's are going to cross out. This one is in the top, this one's in the bottom, so they're going to cross out. And if that goes away and that goes away, the only thing I have left is 2 times 1. Okay, so then that's going to give me a 2 right there. Okay, but I don't want to cross it out because I need to distribute here. All right, now, now I'm going to take this and I'm going to be multiplying it times the one half. This two is in the top, this two is in the bottom, so those twos are going to go away. And I'm going to be subtracting, because it's a subtract sign, this quantity. So minus that quantity of two plus x. And if you don't remember to keep this as a quantity with those parentheses, you're going to drop a negative throughout this entire thing. All right, now on this bottom, again, I don't want to multiply it out or distribute it because maybe something's going to cross out. I am going to clean it up a little bit. Let's put the 2 in front and then the x and then the 2 plus x. Okay, now let's simplify a little bit more. If I uh, you know, subtract this quantity, I can distribute basically negative 1 and go through and change the signs in that numerator, which is what I want to do. So the 2 in front stays the same. That becomes a minus 2, and then negative times that x gives me a negative x there. I'm not going to do anything with that denominator just quite yet. All right, let's see if we can do some math here. 2 minus 2 on that top, those two things are going to go away, okay, because that's 0. All right, now I've got a negative x and an x, right? An x in the top, an x in the bottom, so I can cross those x's out. All right, but when I cross this x out, there's that negative right there, so I really do have a negative 1 still left there in that numerator. All right, makes the final answer then a negative 1 over 2, 2 plus x. All right, and then you can either leave it like that or you could choose to distribute either one. A lot of times in calculus, that's all the farther we need to go to simplify because maybe this is going to be something that's found inside a limit or something along those lines. Okay, so three um, examples of how to really quickly simplify a complex fraction using the uh, multiplying through by the least common denominator method. Um, and if you like the video and you're finding them useful, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and then you'll know every time I update one. Thanks.